Bias News Rush. They're interviewing American studies professors. So easy to look like an idiot. What we're talking about here is widespread cheating. Can I make sure no one ever sees this? A lot of students are very attractive. I would even consider having an affair with one of them. You're not going to wear that for the interview, are you? That's an interesting question. Hmm. Oddly enough, no. This is not the culmination of my career. N not that I don't love the honors and the awards. Of course, I mean, who wouldn't love being singled out for praise like this, especially this one? But for me, it's the work. It's the bond that happens between teachers and students that deepens and, and helps shape their lives this is what I have chosen to do with my life. Max. Uh, Lorraine said you were in a meeting. Actually, what she said was that you said you were in a meeting. Lorraine! Lorraine, when I am in a meeting, please do not send people in here willy-nilly. You were in here all by yourself, talking in funny voices. Were you interviewing yourself? Max? No, I just bought this camera to document the autumn of my son's childhood. Ah, that's a nice camera. Yeah, it's digital. What does that mean, exactly? What? Digital. It's digital. It's digital. It's it's you know it's 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 uh, it means that we're living in the digital age. It's everything is digital. Yeah, I know, but what does it mean actually? Andrea, what are you doing here? I thought that we could walk over to the Judith's meeting together and and you could tell me what it's all about. How should I know? Well, Max, you're the chairman of the department, aren't you? Max, please, please, please. You would tell me if you knew. Of course I would. How many years have we been friends, Andrea? I've already discussed this with Max, but I wanted to give the rest of you a quick heads up. We're being visited by the segment producer from News Rush. My favorite TV show. Please, how could you watch a minute of that slapdash journalistic drivel? Last week they had a very moving report on Botox treatments. Yes, and two weeks ago they courageously came out against toxic waste. Sounds like you're a regular viewer. I was on medication. Can we hear what Judith has to say, please? They're doing a story on the dumbing down of American colleges. Feels like a hatchet job already. They're interviewing American studies professors at a number of colleges. How we appear on camera is how the rest of the country will view Chadwick. So just relax and have fun. Um, who exactly will be interviewed? Well, aren't you the eager one, Andrea? Hey, I just want to know. Let's face it, it's national exposure. Well, we're all going to be fair game, so be prepared. But don't look prepared. What they want is off the cuff sound bites. But we all get on the show, right? You did just say he's interviewing all of us, didn't you? Don't be so naive. Let's say they interview the six of us, but three of us are dull as dishwater. You don't think they're really going to end up on the show, do you? I guarantee I will not be dull. I will speak in crisp, dazzling sound bites. I'm going to be speaking to the producer about setting up some ground rules, and then we can continue to go through the motions of doing our jobs. Bottom line, think before you talk. OK, I knew, OK? And yes, I was practicing to be interviewed, but it's so easy to look like an idiot on one of these oh, things. Oh, yes, I can imagine. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about any of us. Well, some of us aren't worried because we picked up a few tricks along the way. What tricks? Oops, gotta run. No, 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 no. What tricks? Well, for starters, don't pontificate. Uh, I don't pontificate. That must be a recent development. Listen. Incidentally, Max, you're not going to wear that for the interview, are you? What's wrong with this?
Hey, 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 hey! Boundaries, Lorraine. Can I say something that I hope is in the category of helpful hints? Do I have a choice? There's this kind of squinting, almost reptilian thing you do with your face sometimes. Don't do that when you get interviewed. Someday you'll thank me. No, I'll thank you right now. That's very helpful, very supportive. Oh, and uh, Lester called. He's at his friend Mark's, and he'll probably stay over. Oh, I don't want him sleeping over during the week like that. I don't see him enough as it is. Hello, Kathy. It's Max Bickford. I'm sorry you got stuck with the kids tonight. What? No. Huh? No, no. It's just a miscommunication. Okay, thanks. Bye. He's not there. They have no idea where he is. Let's think this thing through. This isn't like him. Where have you checked so far? Could be lying in a ditch somewhere. Dad, listen to me. Who have you called? Evan and Ben. And neither of them know where he is. Well, they're not going to tell you. What, you think they're lying? All I'm saying is that if his friends know something, they're more likely to talk to me. Aaron. Hi, it's Nell Bickford. I'm looking for Lester. Aaron, cut the crap. Aaron, this is Nell. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, bye. It's a party. He should be there. This is Sky. It's her party. Nice to meet you. Can I say hi to your parents? They're out tonight. I was afraid of that. But they don't mind when I have parties. Uh-huh. Lester, I hate to be a nudge, but you're late for your Taekwondo lesson. I'm sorry, Sky. He's working up to his black belt. <laughs> sorry. No worries. I'll see you in school. I can't believe you did this to me in front of Scott. Did what? Totally humiliated me? You lied to me. I knew you wouldn't have let me go if I told you the truth. And you think that's a good enough reason to lie to me? I really, really wanted to go. You are not old enough to go to a party without adult supervision. And it is not OK for kids your age to smoke cigarettes and drink beer? Well, those were older kids. I mean, some of them were 15. Oh, then it's no problem. They're only six years underage. You treat me like I'm a baby. I treat you like a 12-year-old. Lester, I want to trust you, but you cannot lie to me no matter what. Do you understand? I'm sorry. OK. Accepted. But you're grounded for two weeks. And that means straight home from school, no friends over, no parties. working so late. We have a lot of work to do. Is that your final answer? Okay. We're working late because we're lonely. Did you think I was going to sugarcoat it? <laughs> I just wanted to hear myself say it out loud. Well, thanks for the uplifting conversation. Mm -hmm. Now I'll just go take myself to dinner. You know, I can never get used to eating in a restaurant alone. Bring work. Fools everybody, even you. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's the weekend, then there's no hiding the stigma. Mm. You're a woman without a man. But this being a weekday and all, no stigma. None whatsoever. Uh. Well, great. I feel liberated. Thank you. No problem. Professor Bickford, you have a visitor. Are you in a meeting? Valerie, what are you doing here, and what have you done with Lorraine? 
She's out sick and asked me to cover. I'm still technically your intern. She said I should always ask you if you're in a meeting, even if you're alone. Are you in a meeting? No. No, I'm not, but thank you for asking. Uh, who is out there? Dan Franklin, the News Rush producer. Oh, yeah, send him in. OK. Mr. Franklin. Dan Franklin. Dan, Max Pickford. Can I get you anything, Mr. Franklin? Well, how about a cappuccino? All we have is coffee and non-dairy creamer. Even better. OK. Welcome to Chadwick. I, uh, I just wanted to make it clear that we're one of those old-fashioned colleges where education comes first. I want to try to keep the disruption to a minimum. It's not a problem. I'm looking for on-the-fly interviews with the professors as they go about the business. And, and what kind of questions will you be asking? Does he have to tell you that, Professor Bickford? Uh, excuse me, Valerie. I am sorry. That slipped out before I had a chance to stop it. It's just that I'm a journalism minor, and Professor Bullen... <laughs> Please, uh, no explanations are required. Actually, Valerie, I don't usually tip my guests off about the nature of the questions. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the coffee. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Valerie, you can go now. We're in a meeting. Oh. I just want to give Chadwick a fighting chance to look good. Knock, knock. Andrea, just happened to be in the neighborhood. Hi. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Professor Andrea Haskell. Dan Franklin, you look very familiar. Oh, well, you might have seen her picture on one of her really interesting and, and well-received books, which should have gotten far better sales. Andrea Haskell, Elvis slept here and here and here. Yeah, I'm the tattletale. <laughs> well, they had me on the floor a couple of times. You are very funny. Well, I, I had fun with that. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I'm just running interference so that Dan can do his job and we can do ours. Uh, honestly, there's nothing to worry about, Professor. The, the, the premise of my uh, piece is that here we are, waving the flag, fighting terrorism, and uh, college students are woefully ignorant of the very mm -hmm. basics of history. I have tests showing that uh, students have no idea who fought in the Civil War. They seem to think that Kennedy solved the Canadian missile crisis and that Hitler terrorized people with the gazpacho. <laughs> 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 That's like not knowing what digital means. Exactly. You know, ignorance among college students is not a late-breaking story. There's a long tradition of giving dumb answers to obvious questions and then trying to make that into some kind of blanket indictment of the entire American educational system. Well, and, and that is exactly the kind of thing we're looking for in the interviews. I look forward to ours. Nice to meet you both. Mm. <laughs> I'm late. I've got to go, too. You're right, Max. You really don't pontificate anymore. Sound bites, Max. For God's sake, sound bites. You from Texas? How did you know? Well, I spent a year in Austin at KYE, and I thought I could recognize a little lilt. It's distinctive. It reminded me of those days. And where's home now? The village, West 12th Street. Oh, near Balducci's. <laughs> I used to get lost in those aisles all the time when I went there on Sundays when I lived in New York. Oh, all those incredibly exotic vinegars and pickled things. So, um, <clears throat> I look forward to our interview. Me too. You're not going to throw me in curveballs, are you? Ask me about global warming <laughs> or saving llamas. Oh, oh well, I'll save those till later. He's walking around with this dazed expression on his face. He's hardly eating. I even caught him trying on my cologne. <laughs> Lester's in love. Good for him. I remember that it was only yesterday that it was you. As I recall, it was Mike Miller in the eighth grade. And I think I saw him give you your first kiss one night when he was walking you home. Good memory, Dad. Except my first boyfriend was Ricky Paley, and my first kiss was in seventh grade in Laura Grotsky's bedroom closet. No one saw, not even you. No, I distinctly remember it was Mike. You never met Ricky. You wouldn't have liked him. Besides, you were always so messed up all the time that it wasn't exactly hard to keep you in the dark. I'm not enjoying this part of the conversation. I'm just being honest, Dad. Max! Now! Hold on. I was just on my way to your house. What's wrong? Is Jake okay? Was Lester at that party last night? Yes. 
Jake came home wasted, drunk, worse, pot. And I just found out where he got it, that new girl at the school, Sky Brandon. Lester! Dad, let me talk to him. He's not going to tell you the truth. Why not? Because you're his father. What? There's something I want to talk to you about. What? This girl, Sky. How well do you really know her? I don't know. She's in all my classes. I heard she brought some pot to the party the other night. No, she wouldn't do that. Was there pot? I don't know. I don't think so. Have you tried it? No. Are you sure? I think I'd know if I tried it, Dad. Lester, you know how I feel about drugs. Don't worry about it. I have to worry. It's my job. People use drugs. I use drugs because they make you feel real good. They make you feel good until they don't. And when they don't, sometimes it's too late to stop. Sometimes it's too hard to stop. Are you listening to me? So anyway. Whatever happened to that nice girl you had a crush on in Hebrew school? Can I be excused? I'm just curious. I don't like her anymore. You like Skye? Duh. Duh. See, I told you. I hate duh. Comfortable? No. Uh, hey, uh, now, just look here. It'll be over before you know it. Oh, that's what my dentist said before he pulled out my wisdom teeth. And it was, wasn't it? Uh, well, yeah, but I was on laughing gas. <laughs> okay, um, I need to represent the academic community of Chadwick College with thoughtfulness, sophistication, and wisdom born of experience in five words or less. Can we get the stand in? <laughs> <laughs> So you got all those nerves, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're good at this, aren't you? Hey, I peeked in at your classroom earlier. Let's talk about who's good at their job. You saw me teach? I wish I had a teacher who cared as much as you do. You're a natural. You give. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Ready to roll? Yes. <clears throat> We're rolling, Dan. Professor Haskell? What reassurances can you give uh, parents who are shelling out upward of $25,000 a year for college tuition that their kids are actually learning anything? Well, I can't. I'm not sure that the escalating costs of tuition are reflected in the curriculum of all colleges, but I can tell you that here at Chadwick... Sorry to barge in on you like this. Don't be. We're happy to meet Lester's father. Lester's a great kid. I think our daughter really likes him. <laughs> Sarah. Well, she does. I don't think that's a secret. We're just so happy she's made some friends at her new school. Sometimes it takes her a while. You move a lot, huh? Yeah, three times within the last six years. I've been transferred. It's an adventure. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about the party the other night. Sky told us she wanted to have a few friends over. I wouldn't call it a party, exactly. Well, there were over 30 kids here. <laughs> I doubt it. I was here. Now, it's none of my business how you raise your daughter, but... No, it isn't. My son was in your house, and I saw kids drinking beer. Sky's uncle stopped by to check in on her. Maybe you saw him drinking a beer. No. These were young kids. I'm sure you're mistaken. Okay. Look, I'm sorry to say this, but I heard there was marijuana at the party. No, there wasn't. There wasn't. There wasn't? How do you know? Because Sky would have told us. We have a very open relationship with our daughter. We trust her. Skye knows that if she wants to try pot, she can try it with us. That's our deal with her. And because of this deal, you think your daughter's incapable of lying to you? Lying? Excuse me, Max. I'm sorry to rock your world, but our relationship with our daughter may be different than yours is with your son. We talk to each other. We really listen to each other. You should try it. I know how to listen. And what I'm hearing right now is the slow, steady hum of denial. 
Sometimes, I think, there are simply too many distractions for students. They often come here tragically unprepared for anything other than a brisk game of Frisbee. And, of course, we do what we can, but the mandate always is they must be entertained. So we do our best to entertain them, so they'll occasionally honour us by paying attention. Well, a young colleague of yours puts the blame on the tenured professors who contribute nothing. Oh, really? Uh, the real fault lies with the teachers, who lack life experience and teaching abilities to make history come alive, who teach a kind of irresponsible pop culture drivel which offers little more enlightenment than a trip to the multiplex, which is why students wander out of here, rubbing their eyes in the sunshine and wondering where Nebraska is. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the big deal, Dad? I'll pay you back this weekend. Oh, give me a break. You're never gonna pay me back 20 bucks. Okay. You should call it a gift, not a loan. Cool. Why do we call it a loan, anyway? <laughs> I think it makes us both feel better. Oh. Okay. Now you're gonna pay me back, right? Yeah, sure. Very good. You got something in teeth. I do? Mm-hmm, here. Did I get it? No. Spinach salad. Oh, too much information, Dad. I got a book. You have to learn how to budget. It's from my dope dealer. What am I supposed to do? Can I grab you for a second, Professor? Uh, that's my daughter. She's quite a kidder. Oh, let's do it. Oh, no, no, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the interview? I, I was going to wear something different. Oh, don't sweat it. The Rumpel Sevenist thing works great. How have students changed since you've been teaching? Do I have something in the... You're a dreamboat. Bottom line, are they getting dumber? Mm. I'm late for the Civil War. Which battle? The one for the minds of my students. But don't worry. I will call you and we will set a time. Mom say to clean your room? You caught me. <laughs> Hi, come on in and sit down. There is so much detritus involved in teaching. I try to recycle everything, but I just need to find a way to use less paper in the first place. You were wonderful on camera. I had a good director. God, I grew up listening to this on the radio next to my bed. It's, I used to fall asleep dreaming of the uh, cool life these guys were living out in California. <laughs> it's where the California dreaming fiction started for me. Not what it's cracked up to be? Well, I... I go to work at nine, I walk out at midnight. My life's about as glamorous as a shift in a steel mill. Slots to fill with product. And uh, doing your best to uh, make what you're making mean something while you're racing the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that scene in Broadcast News, you know, when Joan Cusack is running down the hallway. Well, and... With the tape, when she just <laughs> duck under the... Yeah, yeah, to get it to Holly Hunter before Because the... it's seconds to air time, and boom, it's on the yeah. air. Yeah! It's... Yeah, that's a funny scene. Yeah. <laughs> Come to dinner. You sound like you haven't had a home-cooked meal in years, and I never get to cook for anybody, and I have just been shopping. It's not about Ducci's, but... That would be very nice. I'd really like that. Thank you. Hey, Sky. Lester. You got here fast. Glad you could come. What about your dad? You know, being grounded. Well, if he found out I invited you, he'd kill me. Hey, bro. He might get home early, though. Chill out. It's only 3.30. Your dad doesn't come home till 5, right? His cookies are awesome. You know, they taste amazing if we were wasted. Look what I've got. <laughs> Maybe this isn't such a good idea anymore. Aren't you happy to see me? Well, yeah, I am. I just... Hey, my dad will totally smell that. You're so paranoid. You know, he could be getting home, like, any minute. Hey, it's okay. Your dad's got you all freaked out. This will relax you. I don't want any. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. I just don't feel like it. Come on, Sky. We could still catch him. A bunch of us were going to go to the park, but when you called, I decided to come over here. I thought you'd like it. I do. I just... I've done the math. It'd be cheaper to buy a laundromat. That way I could get some profit to balance out what you spend. What do you want from me? The machine at Hockaday is always broken. And besides, we'd miss out on all these great opportunities for father-daughter bonding. 
I don't believe this. Lester! Lester! Yeah? Get down here! What's the matter? The kid is out of control. Red? White. All main cost possibilities officially covered. Something smells good enough to eat. No. You're not vegetarian, are you? Card carrying carnivore. Oh, good. I lucked out. I forgot to ask. So the meal is London broil, and the success of the dinner has reached critical mass. So please forgive me if I leave you the, um, the corkscrews on the bar. I'll be having white, despite what James Beard says. It's nice here. It's um, homey. You have good taste. Thank you. I moved around so much when I was a kid that when I finally found this place, I started acquiring real furniture and settled in for the duration. I like spending time here. Well, I'd like that, too. I mean, if I were you. You got something to tell me? I'm sorry, I just... It's a teenage thing, I know. When I was your age, I couldn't stop myself either. But unfortunately, Lester, unlike acne and being awkward with girls, this is one I didn't grow out of. What? There were at least 15 cookies on that plate. Sorry. At least try to balance it out with some fruit. <clears throat> What's up? You're not gonna go tell Dad stuff, are you? So what's going on? Is it Skye? You really like her? So what's the problem? Well, I think she likes me, but I don't know if she would like me if she really knew me. You know what I mean? Why don't you act like yourself and see what happens? I mean, if you can't be yourself around her, it doesn't sound like much fun to be with her. I don't know. It's just that everybody likes her, and she likes me. It's weird. It's not weird, you weirdo. She's just lucky that you like her. Do you like Ruskin? You got so many books about her here. Not like. I'm ardently a fan of. Right after I graduated from uh, Chadwick, I took six months in London, practically moved into the National Gallery. I figured, when else am I going to have a chance to do this? Might as well do it when I'm young and fancy free. <laughs> Not me. I got married. Right out of college? Yeah. Chalk one up to old-fashioned values. What happened? I'm still married. But when you asked me for dinner, I thought maybe I should say something about it then, but I didn't, because I didn't want to assume that you were uh, interested in me in any way. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's hard to get the signals right when, and all that. It's hard to know what's actually going on when you first meet someone. I... Were you interested in me? <laughs> well... Yes, I was. Yeah. I wish you'd said something then. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad you said something now. I felt really close to you right away. Uh, made me feel very uncomfortable. In a way, I'd forgotten about being uncomfortable. How do you mean? Challenged, alert, alive, scared. I've been married over 20 years. I should have said something right away, but I didn't, I guess, because I didn't want to let go of you being interested in me. Well, it's just dinner, right? I mean, we can have dinner. We're both adults. We both know that it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, three people in a relationship. This doesn't work. I've always been around attractive people. It's a people profession. But in 20 years, you know, I've been tempted to cheat on my wife. But I've only thought I might act on that temptation twice. Once was the second I met you, and the other time is now. Oh, no! Oh, oh no! My London's royal! Oh. I... I'm Lucy 
Hey, Ricardo, in the kitchen. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hey, you know, when I was at high school, I wanted to play the guitar. I was pretty good, and some people thought I could make something of it if I pursued it. But my father, he, he pushed me into journalism. You're a good journalist. Yeah, but 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 here, what this is, what this isn't going to be, reminds me of that music. I left behind. Maybe because it it can't be anything. It just seems like you gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah, I've gotta go. I've gotta go. Great pleasure meeting you, Andrea Haskell. You're a great guy, Dan. I wish. <sighs> Good luck with everything. Obviously, this dumbing down is an issue we discuss all the time. Well, any conclusions? Personally, I think the Internet is the real villain here. It's simply too much of a temptation for the students. They often take the easy way out and cut corners. You mean cheat? Well, that's a harsh word, Dan. They grab papers, research, whatever, off the Internet and submit it under their own name. I think they would consider it more like sampling, like Moby. Is this widespread? Oh, well. Let's be honest here. It's all over. So what we're talking about here is widespread cheating here at Chadwick. Oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable with that, Dan. <laughs> but isn't that what you're describing? Can I make sure no one ever sees this? <laughs> this needs to be seen. That's a courage, Rex. Thanks for telling it like it is. Oh. I told you we wouldn't smell it. You would have freaked out if you did. You know how many times I've smoked in my room? My parents don't have a clue. Your parents wouldn't care. Yeah, they would. They want me to do it with them, but I'm like, no way. I mean, who wants to get high with their parents? No, I have a French test after lunch. You do better on tests when you're high. Trust me. Look, it's no big deal. You shouldn't do it if you don't want to. Feels so good. Lester. You know what they don't serve anymore? American chop suey. I love American chop suey. And chocolate pudding. I love chocolate pudding. You know, when I was a kid, I used to think, 
Grown-ups get to have chocolate pudding whenever they want. And now here I am, a grown-up, and I get to have all the chocolate pudding I want, and I never make it for myself. You think that some of the appeal of chocolate pudding is having someone else make it for you? What do you think? <sighs> Let's start again. Andrea, nice to see you. You look miserable. You said something about chocolate pudding. I didn't know you were listening. You're right. About something that you want. But you never let yourself have it. Until you do. And then it turns out not to be what you want. Not to be what you want. Like a relationship. No, I thought you were talking about chocolate pudding. You think you know someone. And then they surprise you. Yeah, they do. I hate surprises. Even good ones? Oh, when's the last time you had a good surprise? Good point. I can't believe you told Mrs. Hurley. I didn't tell her anything. So how'd she find out? She saw us go off together during lunch. I told her I did it alone. Well, I guess she didn't believe you. I guess I'm a pretty lousy liar. Do you think we'll get suspended? Maybe. Sorry I got you in trouble. You didn't. I got you in trouble. And I'm sorry. Because I like you, but I have a feeling our parents aren't going to let us see each other for a while. If ever. I don't want to lose you as a friend. I lose friends every time we move. You get used to it. How could you do this? You told me you hadn't even tried pot. Well, it was true then. What the hell were you thinking? Smoking marijuana in school before a test? I feel like I don't even know who the hell you are anymore. I don't know who I am either, Dad, if it makes you feel any better. It doesn't. I imagine the competition of jobs is less fierce at a woman's college. Well, I wouldn't say that. I certainly had a number of offers. I chose to teach Chadwick. Because it was all women? No. In the classroom, women can be just as challenging as men. Then why choose an all-woman school? Well, it's certainly not because I wanted to surround myself with young, attractive females. I mean, not that the women at Chadwick aren't attractive. A lot of students are very attractive. Of course, I am not saying that I would even consider having an affair with one of them, if that's what you meant. Who said anything about having an affair? So what's going wrong with higher education? Nothing. Well, how can you say that? Like this. Nothing. Does anyone care about all these students who graduate and don't know the basics? See, now that's another loaded question. So if you'll excuse me. But, but, but why aren't students as educated today as they were in the past? Why? You want to know why? Start with this. You and your show and shows like yours. If you want to know why students are uneducated, look in the mirror. Perfect, thank you very much. Very good. Finished that little science fiction film of yours yet? Well, we covered a little science, uh, Rab in Physics and uh, Cooper in Math, but so far the only fiction we have is your interview. I think you're fooling us, or maybe you're fooling yourself, about the uh, dumbing down of the students. And this is coming from your vast experience of, what, three days on a college campus? We did a lot of research before we came here, and we've been to other colleges. Every semester I start off by giving my students a list of about two dozen names. Antigone, Madison, Disraeli, Michelangelo, Douglas MacArthur, Lao Tzu. And it's true that a lot of the times, my students don't know some of those references. And it really depresses me because, after all, how do we maintain a civilization if they don't have well-rounded minds? But one day, I realized that they know this culture from other very important references. They don't know Palestrina, but they know Karl Orff, surprisingly enough, or Bob Marley. Of course, they have to study Shakespeare, and they have to study Sophocles, absolutely. But the culture is not frozen. It changes. 
You know, there was a time when no one knew who Bach was. And there was a time when no one knew who Melville was. And I will bet you that the guardians of that culture were just as appalled as you are when their young people started using these new and unknown names. But that's what the culture does. That's how the culture reinvents itself. And cut. You were taping this? Yeah. And it was great. Except for the poppy seed stuck between your teeth, but no one will notice because they'll be too busy listening to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, hey, you. Ah, oh, hey, you. Packing up your tents and silently stealing away? I left something in your office. Well, if I tell you, it'll spoil the surprise. <laughs> it's going to be a good show. I'll send you an advance tape. I'd like that. It's a beautiful day. I envy you this campus. Mm. Just being here, I feel younger again. It made me remember a time when my whole life was stretching ahead of me and everything was possible. Maybe that's why I like hanging out with kids this young. You know, I didn't sleep last night. My wife called and I practically bit her head off. I was grouchy and I think even a little bit mean. What for? She didn't do anything wrong. Accepting what is, it's a mark of maturity. Oh, I was primed to meet you. It's been a really um, difficult year for me, facing the solitude of the life I've chosen, or the life that I found. And, and then you came along. And it seems so right, and, and you're so good, and so honest, and so funny, and so real, and then it can't be, and I just feel like going to bed and eating chocolates. <laughs> Isn't that immature? I still feel immature myself. I wish we could be immature together. Goodbye, Dan. Bye. So what do you think is an appropriate punishment for you? Isn't being grounded for two months enough? Nope. How about doing the dishes for a week? For a month? For a year? What kind of punishment do you want me to have? Well, it's more about the kind I don't want. What do you mean? Lester, the worst kind of punishment I ever inflicted on myself was during those years I was drugging and drinking. And I want more than anything for you to avoid that. And what I really want is for you to be a happy, healthy kid and grow up to be a happy, healthy adult. Smoking marijuana is not the way that's gonna happen. Don't worry. This stuff made me sick. I'm never smoking again. I hope not. So is this what it's gonna be like for a while? Eight weeks. Dad? Yeah? I know you're still mad at me and everything, but can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you think Sky will still like me after this? Sky is not exactly my favorite person right now. I know, but I really like her, and I know I wouldn't have done that stupid stuff if I thought about it. It's just that when I'm with her, I don't think. Well, at least not the same way. It's weird. Yes, it is. It won't happen again. Well, actually, it will. And more and more as you get older. What do I do? You tread carefully. That's it? No. But 
We have time to talk about it. In the meantime, there are some dishes in there that are waiting to be washed.